So the project that I'm tackling this time around is the Martian fighting machine or tripod that's featured in the Jeff Wayne's version of the War of the Worlds. It's the version I knew as growing up as a kid and the cover art and illustrations that were done by Michael Trim has always stuck with me as a version that I'd really like to make one day. I've already been doing some research on working out how to put the pieces together. Uh, one of the things I've found that could be useful is the uh, bit of metal that you see there. That's actually the top of an automatic rotary potato peeler where you sort of dump all the potatoes inside there and that spins around and it sort of takes the skin off. You can see there that I've sliced it in half to have a look at the structure of the metal that I'm going to be using. And I'm hoping that the bulk of the shape of the tripod I'll be able to get out by uh, cutting these up into different component pieces and, and then reassembling them into the look that I'm going for. It's pretty likely that I'm going to have to cast up some of the smaller components in this as well. Things like the feet and joints may have to be something that I'll have to cast up as individual pieces. Some of the more unusual shapes of the surrounding pieces where it all sort of connects together and the spine sort of section that goes across the back. They are custom parts so I'll probably have to make up out of wood or resin and, and then cast them into solid component pieces. One thing I have already done as a bit of an experiment though is based on the, uh, the thinness, if you like, of the legs. The legs aren't just thin tube, they're also a tapered tube. And what I found is by taking a standard piece of tube and running a sliver, cutting a sliver off one side of it, I can then sort of hammer that down flat and sort of get that tapered sort of effect that I'm going for. And hopefully once I've got three of those, I can put that cut section to the center of the, the three uh, to get the, the triple sort of position of the leg that I need. And then with the little spacer pieces there that lock everything into position, they, uh, they should look very much the part when they're all polished up and cleaned up. But before I can get too carried away working out the legs, I need to work out the body size first because that will end up dictating the overall size of the tubing that I need to use. And this piece, whilst it's a reasonable sort of test, may actually end up being too big for what I need. So I need to do uh, a few more mock-up prints that give me the, uh, the left and right profiles, left, right, top, bottom profiles that I need so that I can then transfer that onto a piece of paper uh, and work out the, um, the contour shapes so that I can start seeing whether or not the shapes that are in this are a usable sort of... Uh, representation of the shapes I need to try and get out of a, a real three-dimensional object. So I was able to draw a cross-section of the piece that I've already cut in the metal uh, around that outside edge and that gives me the profile that I can then enlarge these pictures up to the size that matches this profile and what we end up with is a piece that's that big. So to give you an idea that's the size of my hand there. Fiddling around with the geometry I could have made it a bit smaller but I do like the idea of it being a, a larger size and that sort of that bigger size should also tie in with the uh, the size that I'm making up as far as the legs are concerned. So now that I've got a top and side profile I should be able to start working out as far as the metal is concerned to start mimicking the three dimensional shapes that I'll need to reassemble into the body shape that matches those, uh, those profiles. The biggest problem with trying to work out something like this is translating a um, two-dimensional line onto a three-dimensional shape. So uh, it's a little bit fiddly trying to get it looking the way it should look, but with a bit of perseverance and probably a couple of rubbing off here and there, I should be able to get the look that we're going for. Uh, this is going to be the initial cutout piece, which I'll mirror onto the other side. Uh, and then this outer piece that you can see here, it will be like a lockdown collar that will be made as a separate piece. I'll probably have to shape that. Uh, it may end up even being a cast piece. But essentially the first thing I want to do is make sure I have that cut out so that I've got the right number of sort of mounting points around the outside edge to sort of make up where that shape should be. So that's the piece cut out. Uh, if anything, I think the shape is pretty close to right uh, in terms of translation. Uh, I need to flip that now and get that pretty close to the other side. As you can see I've used that line as a guide but I've kept it uh, intentionally a little bit smaller than it'll probably end up being to allow for the fact that I've, I've got to try and get an exact mirror image on the other side so having a little bit of play area as far as being able to sand it back and match up those halves to identical uh, is probably a good idea. So there we go, you can see that's not 100% mirror image of each other but there's an, I've left enough play there to sort of bring that back uh, to get them perfectly right once it's all done. But I think that's already starting to look like something and we're very early into the project so once we start cutting details in and getting other pieces sort of attached to it I think it's going to start coming together pretty quickly. The profile on the top there is still quite egg shaped but you can see as it comes under here it becomes quite flat. I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is I use half the piece in that sort of orientation and I'm hoping that for the bottom half I should be able to change the orientation to pick up that flatter sort of plane that we're going for. But like I said, it's all very experimental, so we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so that goes very close to getting us the, the profile that we're after. Um, so it matches fairly well that way. 
but the but the curve of the metal that we have needs to kick in a little bit more for that top section for the top down profile so this bit has to kick in a bit more and the same thing at the back so hopefully there's enough softness in the metal that I can fiddle around with that and see what we come up with. I've given that a very quick hit on the anvil just to bring that curve in a bit more and to flatten this curve down a bit so that it more closely matches the lines that we're going for. As I suspected it's very much going to be a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle where bits are going to have to be pulled in and, and pushed out to, to make it match. You can see that that front section there is a lot closer than it needs to be, but it's also affected the way these lines come together. Thankfully though there is quite a bit of body in the metal, there's quite a bit of thickness there that I can sort of get a pretty good joint and then sand quite a bit back um, without having to worry about it being an absolute perfect fit, so that when I get those seams joined uh, they can become a perfect fit. As I've been cutting away pieces as well, uh, some of the off-cut pieces already look like they might be useful as well, similar to that sort of tail sort of piece that I may be able to incorporate there in terms of the possible usable piece. I did initially think that that may end up being a cast piece, but if I can do it as a, a piece that's already out of the existing material, then so much the better. So there it is with the basic structure sort of taped together, and that's already very close to getting the profile that I'm after. There's still bits that are going to have to be trimmed off and tidied up in terms of the overall metal, especially when it comes to the permanent joining of it. But having it done like that now gives me enough of a reference that I can start working out the scale as far as the other elements are concerned. I can tell, for instance, that the distance across the, uh, the cockpit section is pretty much the same sort of size as the feet are, and the distance across the body is very similar for the outrigging of the legs and um, it just allows me to sort of have a, a point of reference that I can start sculpting up these individual pieces that are going to be cast uh, so that they're more accurate to the overall size of it. So that's where it was quite important to get that initial body shape sort of sorted out first. So the next thing is to work out exactly how long these legs are going to be and that should tell me from there. So this is not a terribly big drawing but it should be enough to work out. So we're going to say that that's three centimetres across uh, and the legs in this drawing are 12. Um, so if I translate that to there, which is going to be allowing for the extra bits that I've got to put on, it's going to be 16, which is going to be 64. So 16 across to translate into 64 for the length of that leg. These last couple of bits here are unmodified tube. They might taper slightly towards this little collar piece that's at the top but I'm yet to work out whether or not that's going to be a separate piece or whether or not it's going to be a permanent attachment to where the hinge sort of marries up on the inside there. I need to take off a slither of the tube which is just pretty much close to dead on half at one end and then zeroing out to basically nothing at the other end. But that again it should give me enough that that will close up sufficiently enough to sort of fit into the end of those pieces for that little extra bit that it needs for that top piece. So that's the basic concept sorted out for how the legs are going to go together. Now I can start working out where the collar pieces and the mounting pieces need to be as far as the legs are concerned and start working out the extra detail bits as far as when they need to be mounted back onto the body. And that's what I'll start tackling in the next video. Hopefully there's some people out there that like this version. But anyway, that's the update for this time, guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.